Hello, everyone. Welcome to watch Xinhua News Agency's live report. I'm Mu Xiao, reporting from the World Robot Conference 2016 in Beijing. Right now, some of the most advanced soccer players are gathering here, competing in a fierce game. And as you can see, the players are all robots. Two teams are now competing for the third place of the game. And as the game has already been started, let's just cut short of the introduction and find out who will win the third place. Now you can hear the referee just said, the robots are ready for the second half of the match. And the two teams are competing for the third place are two Chinese universities. They are robot, uh, robot soccer teams from China's Chongqi University and the University of Huazhong Science and Technology. The score for the first half is 3-0 uh, with Chongqi University leading the game. Actually, earlier during the event, the robot soccer teams from both universities has gone through several rounds of fierce competitions and finally advanced to this one. Like soccer of real human beings in robot soccer world, the teams are also divided into different leagues. And this match we are seeing now belongs to the standard platform league in which all teams compete with identical robots. The robots in uh, blue jerseys are from uh, Tongji University, and those in red ones are from University of Huazhong Science and Technology. During the match, the robots operate fully autonomously, which means there's no external control, neither by humans nor by computers. The second half of the match is just to kick it off. The robot athletes in Russia try to control the ball and kick. Nice try. And now it's turn for the, oh, and just fall over, as well as the goalkeeper. Very cute ones. And we can, we can hear the audience are cheering uh, before. And now the referee is helping the, the blue robot to get out of the ball. Another nice kick. Oh, almost a goal. Ah, it's just out of the bottom line. Almost there. Well, the match of the Standard Platform League is carried, uh, carries out on a small field. The two teams of humanoid robots play the game autonomously on the basis of similar rules of human soccer games. The rules of robot soccer are actually very detailed. It has penalty shootout, spot kick, throw in, and sudden death shootout, etc. And each team can call a maximum of one timeout per game with a time of up to five minutes. And teams play, as you can see, five a side on a pitch measuring nine meters by six meters with two 10 minute halves. As in the human variant, each team has a goalkeeper, which is only able to touch the ball with its hands or arms within its penalty area. Apart from this, the rules have also specified what kind of jerseys the robots should wear. Well, it seems both sides are struggling. Trying to get up. Well, considering the rules, there's only one difference from real humans match. That is, if the scoring gap between the two sides reaches 10, the referee must terminate the game. It's called mercy rule. And the ball we're seeing is made of a soft foam. 
It is 100 millimeters in diameter and weighs 44 grams. Many athletes are falling on the ground. Well, it seems many of them are still struggle to pick a ball without falling over. But it only takes 50 years to go from the first digital computer to one that could beat a human in chess. So there's still hope for these robot athletes. Oh, there's a goal from the Tongji University. So the score right now is 4-0, still with the Tongji leading the game. The robot soccer match is part of a series of robot contests during the five-day conference, which kicked off on October 20th in Beijing. The World Robot Conference has drawn nearly 150 robotics companies from around the world. The event features forums, exhibitions, and contests. The soccer game we are watching now is part of the contest. The conference focused on, uh, focused on the technological development and industrial application of intelligent robots. It also aims to foster high-level academic exchanges and to demonstrate the latest achievements in world robot study, their applications in key areas, as well as the innovative development of smart society. Tech savvy and leading robotics enterprises have presented their latest innovations at the event. Starting from Friday, more than 500 teams from over 10 countries and regions have competed their robots in the sky, on land, and in water. For soccer games, most of the teams are from high schools and universities. Some of the robots need a little adjustment for continuing for the game. The most well-known robot soccer game tournament is probably the RoboCup. RoboCup is an annual international robotics competition proposed and founded in 1997. The aim is to promote robotics and AI research by offering a publicly appealing but formidable challenge. Oh, another goal still from Tongji University. That brings the score gap between uh, the two teams to 5-0. The name RoboCup is a contraction of the competition's full name, Robot Soccer World Cup. But there are many other stages of the competition, such as RoboCup Rescue, RoboCup at Home, and RoboCup Junior. This, uh, a soccer robot is a specialized autonomous robot that is used to play variants of soccer. An autonomous robot is a robot that performs behaviors or tasks with a high degree of autonomy, which is particularly desirable in fields such as spaceflight, household maintenance, such as cleaning, wastewater treatment, and delivering goods and services. Some modern factory robots are autonomous within the strict confines of their direct environment. One important area of robotics research is to enable the robot to cope with its environment, whether this be on land, underwater, in the air, underground, or in space. A fully autonomous robot can do a lot of things, like gain information about the environment, work for an extended period without human intervention, move whether all or part of itself throughout its operating environment without human assistance, and avoid the situations that are harmful to people, property, or itself, unless those are part of its uh, design specifications. Okay, now you can see the two teams are trying to control the midfield. Try to looking for the ball, the ball trying to reach the ball, but it seems the two teammates from Huazhou just tangled together. Actually, it seems a fight rather than a football game. And this has amused audience. 
Well, an autonomous robot may also learn or gain new knowledge, actually, like adjusting from new methods of accomplishing its tasks or adapting to changing surroundings. But like other mach machines, autonomous robots still require regular maintenance. Many athletes are falling down on the field. They're just struggling to pull themselves up. The first requirement for complete physical autonomy is the ability for a robot to take care of itself. Many of the battery-powered robots on the market today can fight and connect to a charging station. And some toys, like Sony's Eyeball, are capable of self-docking to charge the batteries. An autonomous robot can also sense the environment. It must have a range of environmental sensors to perform their task and stay out of trouble. The next step in autonomous behavior is to actually perform a physical task. A new area showing commercial promise is domestic robots with a flood of small vacuuming robots. While the level of intelligence is not high in these systems, they navigate over wide areas and pilot in tight situations around homes using contact and non-contact sensors. The next level of autonomous task performance requires a robot to perform conditional tasks. Sideline. So according to the rule, the referee will just put the ball back into the original position uh, where it was last kicked out. In 1928, one of the first humanoid robots was displayed at the annual exhibition of the Model Engineer Society in London. Invented by W.H. Richards, the robot's frame was consisted of an aluminum body of armor with 11 electromagnets and one motor powered by a 12-volt power source. Oh, they need a substitute, so the robot in Russia The robot could move its hands and head and could be controlled through remote control or voice control. And the first electronic autonomous robots with complex behavior were created by William Greywater of the Burton Neurological Institute at Bristol, England in 1948 and 1949. Another goal from Tongji. The scoring gap is continuing to widening. The score now is 6-0, still Hongji University leading the game. The first digitally uh, operated and programmable robot was invented by George Devil in 1954 and it was ultimately called the UniMate. This laid the foundations of the modern robotics industry. The number of robots in the world today is approaching 1 million, with almost half that number in Japan. A couple of decades ago, 90% of robots were used in car manufacturing, typically on assembly lines doing a variety of repetitive tasks. Today, only 50% are in auto plants, with the other half spread out among other factories, laboratories, warehouses, energy plants, etc. Robots are used for assembling products, handling dangerous materials, spray painting, cutting and polishing, inspection of products. The number of robots using tasks as diverse as cleaning sewers, detecting bombs, and performing intricate surgery is increasing steadily, and it will continue to grow in coming years. According to the International Federation of Robotics, by 2018, Around 1.3 million industrial robots will be entering service in factories around the world. In the high-revenue automotive sector, global investments in industrial robots increased by a record-breaking 43% within one year. Come on, kick the ball. Nice try. The game 
almost wraps up. That is the end of the game. What a thrilling game. As you can see, Tongji University just won the third place with a score of 6-0. And actually, later in the day, the final will take place at the same spot. Congratulations to the third place and good luck to the final team. And that's all for our today's show. And thank you for watching. Bye for now.